This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and this is your typical run-of-the-mill flat tappet camshaft. I think that one came out of a, uh, well, it looks like a Cleveland cam, but uh, could be a Windsor cam, too. Uh, I get a lot, a lot of uh, old engines in here that need to be taken apart. Sometimes I save the cams, just uh, um, use them as, as tools and um, or, or just to check cam bearing clearances, that sort of thing. But um, this is what we normally think about with a flat tap at cam. Just an old cast iron core. You can see how it's rough, and that's a pretty good indicator usually of, uh, of just a cast core. And, and that goes for distributor gears or camshaft cores or, or whatever you can see. So this is what we talk about when we normally talk about flat tap at cams. And... Uh, this is what you would normally think about when you think about a flat tappet lifter. Just a standard run-of-the-mill flat tappet job. These have been run for, oh my goodness, decades and decades and decades. Um, as performance gets, you know, higher and technolo technology advances... People are trying to make more horsepower. Cam lobes are getting more and more aggressive. And uh, you quickly find the limitations of, of a standard cast iron core and a standard lifter. So over the years, that has led to different things to, to try and different things to do to try to get flat tappets to live. This is a nitrided core, uh, solid flat tappet for a Windsor. Um, you can tell by just the look of it, it has been nitride. It is solid black all over the lobes and the journals and, and everything. So when you combine uh, a nitrided cam with uh, a typical lifter, you get a little bit more uh, longevity and wearability. When you uh, pair up a nitrided cam with a lifter that has the EDM hole. This one does not have it, but uh, typically they're about a 12 thousandths hole, I think. Um, I'm pulling that off the top of my head. I could be wrong. But a, a very small hole on the bottom face of the lifter. What that does is it takes oil pressure that's injected through the lifter and it pees it all over the cam load. So when you combine a nitrided cam and an EDM lifter, uh, you get really good uh, wearability and uh, the ability to to handle more spring load and more RPM and a more aggressive cam lobe and that sort of thing. So in situations where guys don't want to spend the money for roller cams or they can't because of the, the class rules, uh, this is a good alternative. This is also a flat tappet cam. It's for an FE. And you're probably screaming at me, Brent, that is not a flat tablet cam. It's all shiny. It's got a, a, a steel core. Um, and that's a roller cam. No, it's actually a flat tablet camshaft. And uh, this is a billet steel flat tablet. This is for really high end situations. Um, again, class rules dictate a flat tablet cam. Uh, you can you can run this with a lot of spring load, turn a lot of RPM uh, with a and with an aggressive load, and um, or there's a there's another situation where you may want to use this. Um, actually, two more situations where you may want to use this. First situation is in a in a block such as an FE that uh, an older block that does not have lifter oiling. Um, a solid roller will uh, eventually, and it won't take long, a solid roller lifter will die without pressure fed oiling to it. And we have proven that uh, a decade or so ago, actually longer than that, probably 20, 30 years ago, uh, guys were just killing solid roller lifters because they did not have pressurized oil to them. So they would last about 2,500 miles, 3,000 miles on the street. Um, and, and that's a, that's a situation that you run across in older FE blocks, um, because they don't have oil to the lifters and the lifters just don't run, uh, they don't last very long if you run a roller lifter. So 
this situation would provide a, a viable option for those guys. Um, a steel core, and I'll show you the lifters here in a second. But uh, this, this setup does not require a cam break in. Uh, you can run a, a good bit of spring lows, and I'll get, I'll talk more about that here in a second. But uh, that would be a good option for guys with non oiling, uh, non lifter oiling blocks. The other situation that you would use this is if you want uh, a higher performing cam. Uh, such as uh, going on an engine that's a lot of RPM with heavier valve trains, such as your Ford FE stuff, where you would need a lot of spring load. Um, lots of spring load with a shaft-mounted rocker on an FE head will normally require something like a, a TND paired rocker where you cut the tops of the heads off and you use, uh, instead of the 4 3 8 stand studs, you use that common bar that's held down by the head bolts. Uh, on heads such as tunnel ports, um, it's not always easy or prudent to whack the tops of the heads off because the water is in a different location with those. So uh, if you're wanting to run a ton of spring load, um, you know, it may be, uh, it may be kind of uh, something you don't want to do to, to butcher your heads or to uh, risk uh, having to weld up your heads or, or whatever after you cut into water. So this is an option for that. A um, little bit different with the billet cores. Uh, they don't run, typically we run a lot of lobe taper because uh, flat tappets spin the lifters. You know, these lifters spin. That's what causes the, a nice even wear pattern on your lobe and on the bottom of your lifter. Um, these lobes do not have that much taper on them, so they don't spin quite, quite as fast. Um, and you can run, due to the base circle of a, a roller cam, the lobe profile is, is pretty, you can still see it's got a, a flat tappet shape to it, but it's not as pronounced. And uh, you can get a lot of 200 thousandths duration out of these uh, billet core flat tappet camshafts. And uh, they're not, uh, this particular cam here isn't too far off from some, some of the wilder solid roller cams. So here's the lifters that uh, we would normally use for, for this type of setup. This is a DLC coated lifter and DLC means carbon I'm sorry diamond light carbon I should have done this when I didn't have the camera in my hand but uh, this is a hey come back this is a coated DLC coated lifter and um, that's what we use on on these cams so no breakup or <laughs> no breakup no break in I guess you don't break up either, but no break in. Uh, pretty funky spring loads on these. So about 220 seat and 500, 525 uh, pounds of, of open spring load on these. This is the setup that I'm gonna use on the 397 uh, cubic inch tunnel port dyno mule. This is unfortunately not the camshaft because I have changed I've changed ideas and therefore will be needing a different firing order. So this cam is, um, well, it's, it's eating my food and taking up my room and it's not paying me anything back. So um, it'll sit on the shelf unless one of you all in uh, YouTube land wanna try a, a pretty funky FE billet core camshaft. I'd be happy to sell it. <laughs> But uh, this is the, the situation, this is the setup that I'm going to be using with, with the, the tunnel port dyno mule. So billet core cam, DLC coated lifters, uh, got some PSI valve springs with some manly titanium retainers. Uh, it's going to be some fun stuff. And um, just wanted to show you what the options are for flat tappets. I think we had a video similar to this. Uh, maybe a month or two ago, but uh, I did not have this camshaft in stock and I didn't have the lifters in stock, so I wasn't able to to show all the goodies on that, but uh, here we are. 
So stay tuned for this 397 tunnel port dyno mule coming up. Uh, you'll want to subscribe just so you won't miss out. There's two things that I'm going to be using on this engine that uh, you probably have never seen before in your life. Um, a lot of custom stuff. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on it. All right, guys. Hope you are having a good Friday and a good week. And uh, I will see you soon. I think I'm going to have some more goodies for another engine build to show off today. So we will discuss that with another video. See you all soon.